responsibility manager and custodians and corporate clients have the time of their lives, whether that's working with our design team to create an epic website or making sure our events team geared up to ready to inspire. Uh, my job is to make the greatest experience possible. And over to you, Sarah. All right, thank you. So I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. I am Sarah Murray. And if you go to the next slide, I'll just um, cover a few things. Now I have been with NASA for over 30 years. I worked with them for over 30 years. And I can honestly say that I never ever had a boring day, not ever. I've held various positions with NASA from training the astronauts, controlling the space shuttle. And the photo that you see here on the left was my very first job out of the university. Can you imagine controlling the space shuttle from the ground right out of school? That was my very first job. And this was my very first supervisory job also. I supervised this group of folks. The photo on the right, another exciting job that I had was managing the astronaut training for EVAs, extravehicular activity, which people call spacewalks. Now, this facility, however, was a facility that contained an indoor pool. This indoor pool contained 6.2 million gallons of water, or if you're from other countries, you might say 23 million liters of water. It has a mock-up of the space station immersed in the water so that the astronauts can practice. It's the best environment for simulating microgravity in space. And so once again, a great opportunity, a great job. I learned quite a bit. Now, all of my jobs at NASA prepared me to do what I really, really love to do, and that is participate in STEM outreach. And so I've gotten that technical background from NASA, but what happens when you work in STEM outreach? You have to work with teams. So before my NASA job, I was prepared to work with teenagers. I was in the United States Army, and I'm also a small arms expert. <laughs> so um, while I was in the Army, I was a supervisor in the emergency room. I worked as an emergency room nurse, and I've also done some teaching. So, so all of this has prepared me to do what I really, really enjoy doing. Let's get, move on to the next slide. So we're going to kick things off today by sharing a little bit more about ISET, the company, and then we're going to give you a sneak peek into our flagship program, Mission Discovery, and all the exciting things that happen after. Uh, we then want to hear from you. Um, so if you have any questions, note them down. We want to answer them at the end of the, the webinar and hopefully solve any answers that you're looking to hear. So who are we? Um, I'll begin with sharing a little bit more about Chris Barber, who's the man on the left. Chris was once a headmaster of a school, which he turned from a low performer to one of the top five schools in the UK. And whilst transforming the school, Chris began running student education trips to NASA Kennedy Space Centre. And through these trips, Chris formed some deep connections and bonds with NASA personnel and astronauts witnessing firsthand the incredible impact that space exploration could have on young minds. He saw how the excursions instilled a sense of wonder, curiosity and possibility in his students. And because of this, he wanted to do more. So with the support of Jay, who's the guy on the right, uh, Jay at the time was the director of NASA Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Chris left his role as headmaster and founded ISET in 1998. Chris, uh, is Chris's mission was to use space exploration and the remarkable people behind it to motivate students from all different backgrounds to realize their potential, grow confidence and achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. And for the past 25 years, ISAT has remained steadfast in its mission to inspire and empower young minds from all walks of life. And through our programs and initiatives, we've helped tens of thousands of students to tap into their inner potential and at least the NASA, you can do it spirit in every area of their life. Our belief of education for all has recently led us to partner with UNESCO. Uh, UNESCO is the only UN operation in charge of all areas of education. And we're thrilled that Mission Discovery is their flagship education event around the world. 
So I mentioned space exploration and using the people behind it to inspire students. These are the people that I'm talking about. So each one of these amazing individuals have uh, worked on our programs to help inspire and motivate our students. So to highlight a couple, uh, Tony, Tony Antonelli, top right, a NASA astronaut who's piloted two space shuttle missions to the International Space Station. He was also tasked with putting together a plan that makes human exploration of Mars real and tangible with a deadline of 2028. So we'll see whether that happens. Uh, Scott Kelly then, top left, NASA astronaut and veteran of four space, uh, space, space flights. And until recently, he held the record for the longest space, space flight or single space flight uh, by an American astronaut as he spent 340 consecutive days aboard the International Space Station. Uh, you may recognize him because he was also part of a unique study um, which involved his twin brother um, which examined the long-term effects of space flight on the human body. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is give you a little bit more information about Mission Discovery. So it's an incredible program. It's a five-day program, and I have been a part of this for a number of years now, many years, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it, which is why I am engaged in this. Now, there will be some videos after this that will give you some more information. However, what I want to emphasize is that mission discovery is for anyone. There's no admission process, meaning there are no prerequisites. You don't have to want to be a, a mathematician or an engineer. It is for anyone who is interested. You, If you want to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or an Indian chief, a musician, an artist, it does not matter because anyone and everyone can get something out of the program. The photo here is uh, Barbara Morgan. She was one of our teachers in space. So again, our NASA astronauts come from all walks of life. So right now, I want you to take a look at the videos and it's gonna give you a little bit more information on mission discovery. I don't hear the sound. Do you? Uh -oh. So, I think I know what the problem is. Yeah, you have to reshare and um, select sound. I can help if you want me to try. You got it. Yep. Would you like for me to try it?
I'm not too sure why we can't hear anything. Um, one second, I'll just try once more. I did click share sound, so okay. Philip. thanks for being patient, guys. Maybe Sarah can talk you through the a little bit more about mission discovery just while I set it up. Right, I can, I'll I'll do that. So what you're going to hear in the in the video. And I've done this a number of times, so I know it by heart. On day one, what happens on day one is that the students all come together. And, and these students are usually between 100 to 300 students sometimes that we have. And they're broken up into teams, but they don't know each other. So they're broken up into teams. And the exercises that we go through during that very first day is to get those teams working and gelling together so that towards the end of the week, they are ready to present a presentation to us. So first day is teamwork. We're also teaching them about leadership skills. Now, anything that they learn during the week, I guarantee you they will be able to carry those lessons throughout the rest of their lives. On day two, what happens on day two is that they're going to really start working on that design. They're going to do what we call brainstorming. And the teams get together. They think about what would be beneficial to the earth, to future space flight, to mankind. And so what we want, we don't select experiments unless there's some benefit to the results. And so they will start brainstorming. They will also start working with the astronauts. You will hear from the astronauts. You'll hear from myself. And um, we'll just make sure that they're ready to start gelling as a team. Now, on Wednesday, there's more focus on that particular experiment. We brainstorming, what brainstorming means is that they're going to come up with many ideas. 10, 20, maybe 30 ideas. But on Wednesday, they have whittled those ideas down to one or two and then start focusing on what, how to design that experiment. What material is required? What are the steps that the astronauts have to take? Think about this. They are putting together a process for the astronauts to follow and execute their experiment. So this is all happening on Wednesdays and Thursday of that week. Now, when Thursday comes around, they are polishing up that presentation. And then I'm going to be giving them presentation skills, yet another tool that they will be able to use throughout their lives. Now, granted, everyone may not have the opportunity to give presentations, but when you learn how to give a presentation, you learn how to communicate an idea. So this is something, it's a very important tool to learn. So that's what they're doing on Thursday. They will be polishing up their presentation. They'll be practicing because on Friday, they're gonna be excited. Some of, many of them will be nervous. A lot of them have not given presentations before, but everyone will have to speak and talk to that designed experiment that they have come up with. And so they are presenting that to a panel of judges. I will be a part of that panel. Our astronauts will be a part of that panel. We also work with professors from Oxford and uh, King's College. So all of these people are parts of that panel. We will listen to all those presentations and select the best one. Now, I've told you about the program. What, what's hard to tell you about the program is everything else that comes out of it. There's, there's, there's networking. These students get an opportunity to work with students that have like ideas. They, have, they think alike. And some of them hold these connections for, for years. So that is absolutely great. And everyone does not actually win right? You can only pick one, but one of the videos, it shows you how excited these students were to accomplish what they accomplished throughout the week. They were challenged. They were put out of their comfort zone, which is very important. We make sure that you get out of your comfort zone. 
So the students have lots of fun, but they're also challenged. And at the end, we will select that winning program, that winning experiment, and it, it, it gets launched to the International Space Station. Wonderful, wonderful. There are not many opportunities. This is a unique opportunity, very unique, because there's not another program on earth where you get to spend a week with astronauts and, and high achievers like the professors at the universities and myself. So very unique program that uh, I'm pretty sure anyone would love to, be. like I said, I wish, I really wish there was an opportunity like this when I was coming up. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next slide, Izzy. Should we see if the video works? Hopefully, yeah, sure. fingers crossed, we get to see it. Yeah, because, aha, you got it. Is it working? Awesome. Okay, it great. Working. But uh, it's not in full screen. Mission Discovery okay. is an amazing program that allows students to be exposed to astronauts, NASA personnel, scientists. We focus on skills that these students will need throughout their lives. The students who come here benefit hugely from the experience. They mix with uh, other young people from all over the world and while doing so they learn a great deal about a wider world of perspective away from their own smaller communities. And not only that, they are working in a top university environment and rubbing shoulders with people who are some of the highest achieving individuals on Earth. It's amazing. I mean, the chance to get your experiment to go to space is just sort of fathomable to believe, you know. The inspiration uh, that they're going to get by being involved in a project which develops an experiment with an astronaut, somebody who's been into space, together with a team around that from NASA and ISET, is just too good to pass up. Day one, the focus is teamwork. The students come, they don't know each other, they're nervous, so we break them up into teams of six. We give them team activities, team challenges that will help them gel as a team. To other people, I would say don't be nervous about meeting new people. I'm not particularly a sciencey person in a lot of ways. There's a lot of people you wouldn't normally talk to that are into different things than you, but you all kind of form bonds and you all start to connect and you all have one shared image in the end of it. Day two, that's when we're going to start talking about that experiment that they're going to be designing. At the same time, on that day, they will also be talking to the astronauts. So as they get that design brief, they will start working as a team and start brainstorming. What experiment do they want to conduct that's going to be beneficial to future space flight, to mankind, to the Earth? A great opportunity to learn how to work in a team and how to present to a larger audience. And uh, in many ways, I wish I'd had that opportunity when I was younger. I've always believed that the best ideas are coming from the students. Day three, there's a stronger focus on the experiment work itself. They will still be working with the astronauts, the NASA personnel, the lead scientists, but the focus is on whittling down those ideas so that they have a experiment. Well, what we're very keen to do is try and inspire children to become interested in science. And this is a fantastic way of inspiring children. We hope we're going to come to King's to study, to be interested in science. In the medium of space, the program in its entirety in the way it brings team building, leadership, um, inspiring ideas together is a fantastic platform. The experience has been the best that I think anyone could ever offer. You can't get this anywhere else. Even the top scientists in the world can't send their payloads to outer space. But we're doing it here and we're 14, 15 year olds. It's amazing. Day four, they will be given tips on giving presentations. They will also be wrapping up the research and they will be prepared to deliver that information to the judges on day five. Over the course of one week, these students get to become the world experts in their area of research that could be carried out in space, which is a fantastic achievement for them. Sometimes their, their friends and neighbors at school are, are not the ones that are interested in, in STEM. And meeting other kids who are, it's like so reassuring and, and such a confidence builder. Like not only have I learned science, but I've also learned there's so many other women 
and girls that want to get into science, which makes me feel happy. I've learned so much more about science than I probably would in the science classroom. Day five, the students are hyped. They're ready to communicate to the judges their design experiment. There will be two rounds of judging. Five finalists will be selected. And from those five finalists, the judges will select a winning experiment. That winning experiment will be launched to the International Space Station for the astronauts to conduct. How incredible is that? The winner of Mission Discovery at Teens College is Team Five! I don't think any of us thought we would actually win. I mean, we believed in our idea, of course, but there were so many amazing other groups. I'm sure we've never thought of ourselves as astronauts or people worthy of having an experiment carried out in space. So I think this experience has really taught us that you can do anything. Um, and with such brilliant people working alongside you, I, I think it's so worth it to come onto this course because now we have this amazing experience and it's going to be something we carry through with us for the rest of our lives. I learned that anyone can do anything with anyone with the right mindset. Woo! You are the future generation of science. We see some great discoveries coming out of this room in the future. Well done, everybody. You're fantastic. Talent in itself is often overrated. This notion of what was said, you can do it if you've got the right mindset, I believe is true. Get over this fear of failure. Be asked to do something hard, don't shy away, work together as a team and accomplish something. International Space School Education Trust has the goal of utilizing space and the human space program to inspire young people to make something of themselves. Generally speak it to inculcate what I could, would call the NASA you can do it spirit. Having the mentors there and having uh, advisors going around working with the tables to ensure that the, the quietest voice will get heard. At the start of this week, I definitely wouldn't be standing up right here. And... <laughs> Thanks to the amazing people here, they've given me a voice so I can speak to all you guys. I'm really thankful for that. The confidence of doing something really difficult as part of a team as an experience they can carry with them for the rest of their life no matter what they end up doing. Okay so I really wanted you guys to see the videos because because I, I didn't think I could give the program justice and that what young lady towards the end of that video who was so excited that she was almost in tears this is what is coming out of the program she was not on a team that won a program, won the, the winning experiment, but I guarantee you everyone got something out of that program. And I'm sure you could see how excited everyone was in the program. So what we're looking at now is the next mission discovery. It is coming up in June, in July, I'm sorry, July 10th through the 14th at King's College. And, uh, I will be there along with NASA astronaut Dottie Metcalf Lindenberg. So if you want to come see her, I would say come see this. Now, Dottie was also a teacher. She was a middle school and high school teacher. She taught earth science and astronomy, earth science and astronomy. So she will be sharing her experience, but the students will be working with her myself and the professors throughout the week. So I know I am looking forward to that. Let's move on to the next slide. And um, Izzy's gonna talk to you about some of the accommodations. So at Mission Discovery King's College London, you'll be treated like a university student where you'll get to have your own dorm, your own bathroom, a shared kitchen, uh, so you can have a taste of what university or what college would be like uh, before you hopefully attend yourself uh, post-mission discovery. Um, your safety is our priority throughout. So we have 24-7 security alongside our ISET supervisors uh, to make sure that you're safe uh, whilst you get to enjoy the week ahead with us. 
each evening you'll be taken out for dinner uh, which will mean that you'll get to form even greater bonds and uh, develop on those friendships that you form throughout the day with us. So this is a little insight into what your accommodation will look like, cosy bedroom, uh, you've even got a games room so whilst you relax in the evening you can do that over a game of ping pong or a game of pool. So we've been fortunate enough to run our mission discovery programs all over the world. So we've done this in the UK, in America, India, Australia, and we're really excited to announce that we're going to be uh, going to be running our mission discovery programs in some new locations this year. Uh, so later this year, we're going to be running a mission discovery in Ghana, in Africa, in Qatar, Singapore, and Malaysia. So if you are interested in being notified when these events go live, all you need to do is sign up via the website and you'll be the first to hear about when this programme is going to be run uh, so you can book in a straight away and join us. Okay. This is... Oh, go on, Sarah. Well, I just want to talk to everyone about what happens after that day five after the, the winning experiment is selected, what happens with the experiment? Well, we work in partnership with Oxford and also with King's College. And the scientists gather the material needed for that winning experiment. They prepare that experiment to be launched to the space station so that the astronauts can conduct it. The experiment is prepared and taken to the United States, Florida, uh, Kennedy Space Center. Now, we have launched a number of experiments to the space station, 64 as a matter of fact, maybe more, but at least 64 over 10 missions. So obviously what that means is that we put multiple experiments on a single launch. So we've launched 64 experiments and they have gone up on, we have the Cygnus rocket. There's also SpaceX that's out there. And in the earlier years, we used the space shuttle to launch these experiments. So that's what we use. Those are the vehicles used to get that winning experiment to the space station. I wanna show you a, a quick video of an experiment. So this video is um, a video of um, an experiment which was launched, I think it was just last year. And the astronaut there, her name is Nicole Mann. You only see her hand, unfortunately. She's preparing that experiment for some photographs. But a little thing about Nicole, Nicole was our first Native American to go into space. Before she joined NASA, she was a test pilot. After joining NASA, she became the first female for one of our commercial crews on SpaceX. So um, I just want to make sure that you guys get an idea of what this looks like. When the astronauts have this, these winning experiments in space, they're contained in these boxes and the astronauts take them out and they follow that process that the students laid out for them while they were in mission in mission discovery. And that's what this video shows. And then also this is kind of a, a, a kudos for, for ISET and, and just all the students that have put experiments on the space station. So this picture is actually a box. That box labeled ISET contains experiments from the students. And it is in what, what we're looking at around that box is called the cupola. The cupola, it's an Italian word for dome, but the cupola is the best way for the astronauts to observe the earth. It's made of about seven windows and this is how they observe the earth and, and take photos. But there are not very many programs that can show their experiment from that view. All right, so now I think we're gonna open it up to questions if you guys have any questions about the program. And uh, I don't know, did we get any questions beforehand?
No questions? I think I lost you for a second. Uh, I think we were going to share a little bit more about some of our student experiences. Yes, uh, we were, but yeah, you dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the, the students, like you saw in the video, the students had a had a great experience with that. And I think we actually have some quotes, don't we, from some of those students. We go to the next slide there. While you're in the program, you yeah. get to take photos with the astronauts. Here. Okay, so what she says here is, I have overcome a lot of barriers and developed my teamwork and presentation skills in time for her to go to the university. So, like I said, I don't know whether her experiment won or not, but she gained some very beneficial skills to carry her on to the next step. And every program that we we have uh, or we have run, we encounter student feedback that's like this, that outlines what the program means to them, how much they've enjoyed working with like-minded students, with the NASA astronauts, with Sarah, the mentors, and how much their confidence has grown. Um, something that you may have picked up on in that video that we shared earlier is a student talking about, you know, how at the start of the week, she didn't feel confident to talk in front of others. But by the end of the week, she had that microphone in her hand sharing her experience. Yeah. And it's not uncommon for participants to you know, share that this is the, the best experience of their life, uh, which sounds really cheesy to say, but we hear it quite a lot. Um, and it, it then allows them to have that confidence to, to think about what they want to achieve next in life and to go on and inspire to do that. Uh, Jenna was one of our students that attended Mission Discovery a few years ago. Um, and it just goes to show sort of the feelings and learnings don't stop when you finish the program. Uh, Jenna actually works for iSpace now as one of the um, mission partners um, who looks at and developing relationships um, for the lunar projects um, on the moon. Um, it's mission discovery, I think, because it's um, delivered in your transformative years, uh, can have a really lasting impact on your future. Um, being surrounded by inspiring individuals can, can make you want to achieve greatness. And at that time, when you're 14 to 18, the world is your oyster. So you're just deciding what you want to do next. So I know, Sarah, well, when I joined back up um, after losing connection, unfortunately, um, I think you were just about to ask whether anyone had any questions. So hopefully this is where we get a couple through. OK, okay so I can see we've got one at the moment asking uh, where in Malaysia and Ghana are the mission discovery programs happening? So in our Malaysia program, um, we're actually working with a school called the International School of Kuala Lumpur. So we're looking to host the program there. Um, and then in the Ghana program, uh, we're still fine tuning that uh, mission discovery program at the moment. So we're working very hard with UNESCO, who was our partner that we mentioned earlier. Um, and we're just deciding on which venue uh, we'll be able to host it from. And we've got one from Roy. Uh, so such a great program, thank you. Um, might you know whether some students apply for this program every year? So I think you mean, do people apply for this program every year? So we, the program that Sarah mentioned, King's College London, that's our annual program that we always run. And we're fortunate enough to have students from all over the world uh, that attend this program. I think at the moment we're, on about, um, I think we're, we've had students sign up from about 20 different countries just for the program that we're running in July. Um, and I think about 65% of our students currently signed up are international students. So those traveling um, outside the UK to attend our program. So we've got another one through. So what age would you recommend international students take part in the mission discovery program with the boarding aspect? Uh, I should have mentioned that normally the age is, the, the range is 14 to 18. 
And we, we do allow some older 13 year olds um, after having a conversation with their parents, uh, mm -hmm. but 14 to 18 um, is the, the age requirement that we have for mission discovery. Um, I actually think whether you're the younger end or the older end of that scale, um, it does give you an insight into that university experience. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you, you're you looking to decide what you're wanting to do next as early as 14 sometimes. So just gives students a bit of freedom and um, gives them a chance to form connections um, whilst they're uh, working on the Mission Discovery Week and their experiments. Like, okay, we got some more coming in. Okay, is there an English speaking requirement aspect for international students when applying? Um, so all of our programs are delivered in English. Uh, so basic knowledge of English um, is required uh, when attending our program. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to be fluent, but definitely have an understanding. Uh, we actually have um, a mentor for every two teams uh, at our program. So they're there to support you throughout the week um, and they can help simplify some language if needed. Uh, and then another one, so outside of the summer program, does ISET host programs in schools for a day? So Mission Discovery, the program that we've just mentioned, it can be delivered uh, in schools. So the Malaysia program that I mentioned earlier that's being ran at the International School of Kuala Lumpur, they were initially a school that reached out to see whether we could deliver the program at their school, um, but they were happy to open it up and allow students from outside of their school to attend. But we have also delivered it just for schools uh, with the likes of Tombridge in the UK um, and some uh, other schools across India and America. Aside from mission discovery, we also run a virtual equivalent. So we give you um, a package where students can watch videos from uh, NASA astronauts. So some of the team that I shared earlier, whilst they go through some of the requirements uh, that students need to fit in order to develop an experiment for the International Space Station. Uh, we then, same as mission discovery, will then pick a winner and we'll then launch that experiment to the space station. Um, and we'll provide support and videos to help nurture um, that those personal developments uh, throughout. We also do NASA astronaut visits. So in June later this year, uh, astronaut Tony Antonelli is joining us in the UK where for a week he's going to be visiting schools and organizations uh, to share some of his insights into piloting the space, uh, the space shuttle to the International Space Station. Uh, and also sharing about his mission to Mars. Okay. Uh, so you've got one more through. So for Sarah, what is your favorite memory having been doing this program for several years? Oh, that's so easy. No, actually it's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to give you two. One was actually being in the group that controlled the space shuttle from the ground. I mean, that was just an amazing experience for me. And then secondly, was when I started working. So that was with the space shuttle program. When I started working with the space station program, that's when you started working with international partners and our international partners were from all around the world. And I actually chaired an international board that managed all of the astronaut training, not just NASA, but NASA, Japan, Canada, Europe, and the cosmonauts in Russia. And what I found here was that I really enjoy the interaction with different cultures. And so there was a time where say, I, I traveled to Russia two and three times a year. So those were, I would say my, my two most favorite, I love them all, but my two most favorite were interact, interacting with our international partners and then also controlling that space shuttle from the ground right out of school.
And Sarah, do you have a highlight from the ISAT mission discovery programs that you can pinpoint? I know you've been doing these for so many years now and you've gone all over the world. <laughs> so, um, so what I will say about mission discovery, my experience with mission discovery is that just like the students, when our team, myself, the astronauts, and the professors and the scientists, when we meet these students on Monday, we don't know them either. But I guarantee you by the end of the week on Friday, sometimes we're all just in tears because you know we hate to leave each other. We've, we've learned, it's like we've known each other for years and years. Also, I will say that it is, it's really, I, I enjoy seeing the change in the students from Monday to Friday, like that young lady who was talking at the end. I remember what she was like on Monday and she was sick to her stomach to think that she had to actually present. And there are others that are like that too. So I would say that throughout all of the mission discovery programs, that is pretty consistent. You you can see the change in the students from Monday to Friday. And we all have, have just built this great relationship with each other. And I think just to add to that, so I only attended my first mission discovery program last year and it was an amazing experience. And at the end of the week, I was videoing some students who were sharing a little bit about how they felt about the week and what they enjoyed the most. And what stays in my mind is a student that's signed up just to add something to a CV uh, before applying for university. And at the end of the week, she was sharing that it was so much more than that. And actually, she's developed friendships that will last a lifetime. They've already exchanged numbers and she's actually considering a different uh, avenue um, and a different career. So I think but whether you're joining mission discovery to add something new to your cv or something completely different whether you're into space science i think it just just goes to show that this program is for everyone it really is okay so i've got a question so when students complete the program do they receive a transcript of completion so we didn't show you any pictures uh, during the presentation today but at the end of the program you will receive a certificate uh, congratulating you on um, completing mission discovery. And usually these are handed out by Sarah, who's on the call with me and the NASA astronaut uh, that's attending. So Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger, if you're gonna be joining us in July. Yeah, and you will have photographic proof as we hand out those certificates to the teams, we take photos with each and every student each and every student gets that certificate for completing that program and a photo. And it's such a unique program. I think there's only been a couple of hundred astronauts uh, across the world that have actually flown to the space station. Mm -hmm. So to be able to work with uh, someone that's achieved that and actually to work on an experiment that could be launched to the space station, um, it's such an incredible thing to share with your future recruiter, uh, future university, and it just gives you that confidence to achieve your next step in life. Okay, I think they're all of the questions. Okay. So on the screen that you can now see in front of you, uh, it's just got some of our contact details. So. Um, thanks for uh, you know being patient whilst we had some difficulties with the video and I lost connection at some point as well. Um, but if you haven't had a chance to ask your question or you want to hear a little bit more about the program, please get in touch. So there's an email address and also our website there for you to check out. Very good. And I want to say thanks for having us. I hope you got it. I hope you got a lot of information on the program. But also what I want to mention is when we think about space and why do we go to space? First of all, I think humans, we, we are naturally frontiersmen. We like to explore, but we're not just doing it because we like it. There are definite, definite benefits to doing these experiments in space. And if you ever wanna look at that, you can, you can just Google it 
benefits to experiments in space and you will find a ton of information on what we've learned.